What's up, YouTube? Right now, I'm here with something special, something that you guys even asked for. I asked you guys on Instagram, who should I interview next? And some of you guys said Roxy, so look who it is, the prodigy Roxy. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, just trying to get through quarantine day by day, you know? Same it's like here. that sometimes. Yeah. It's like but the same just thing. to go ahead and hop into it. Thing. Yeah. But just to go ahead and just hop into it. So I, I was looking up stuff about you, and it seems to be like you're a big fan of The Rock. And your name's also Rock C. Is there <laughs> a correlation in that, or is that just like coincidence? I expected this question to be asked. Um, so, it yes, it has a lot to do with <laughs> The Rock, actually. I, I don't like, um, that's kind of like, because I grew up wanting to be a wrestler. So yeah. I always, I, I just always knew. Um, so when I was little, I came up with the name Roxy. So uh, I literally okay. came up with that name when I was like probably 10 or something. And uh, <laughs> so what I did was <laughs> I switched the, the K and the C. I switched it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, Roxy, that's a cool name, right? And then I was like, okay, if I put a little dash before the C, like the C it's can different. stand for my 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 shoot name. My shoot name is Carla. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there well, you yeah. go. <laughs> that works. I mean, that makes sense. It's, I mean, it's different. You know, last time last video I actually had with uh, Leo Rush, he was talking about how uh, he used to be called Li Green because he really liked AJ Styles. So I mean, oh, we all really? have a motivation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, like we all have a motivation for you know our <laughs> names and whatnot. But on top of the fact of being a fan of The Rock, like what's your favorite movie of his? I mean, I, there's a lot. So like, which one is your favorite? Hmm. I have a lot. Um, honestly, when I was little, my favorite one was The Game Plan. Same. I, I loved that movie. I would watch it nonstop. My mom was like... Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was amazing, though, because like, he had like that giant house and whatnot, and then like the scene where he was like carrying masks and Pettis and just like, running through traffic and stuff. Like That was top-notch. And then the little cute dog Exactly. I'll say she that too. like she like dressed it up and stuff. I was like, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it was legendary. Like you, you can't not like it. It was amazing. But you also started training for wrestling when you were like 13. By the way, and no one knows this. She's 18, which is like incredibly yeah. young to be at the position that you're at. That <laughs> to you. That, that's Thanks. amazing. Wow. But like since you started training so early, my only three questions for this was like how, when, and why and like where okay so um like i said i started watching wrestling when i was like 10 yeah. and my dad actually took me to my first live event here in laredo i'm from laredo um in te which is in texas and so um he took me to my first live event and i saw aj lee and when i saw her i was like I'm going to be a wrestler. Like, I can do that. And the thing is, when I was younger, I was, like, a tomboy. So watching wrestling, it was, like, um, I couldn't really, like, relate. Like, I loved it, but I couldn't relate to any of, like, the divas. Yeah. Um, so it was never, like, oh, I can do that. Um, so then when I saw AJ, I was, like, oh, my gosh, she's like me. <laughs> like, I can do it, too. <laughs> so ever since then, I was, like, okay, I'm going to be a wrestler. And I was always so, so serious about it. I'd, I'd tell my family and my friends, I'm like, I'm going to be a wrestler. And everybody was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but even when I was younger, there was this one time where I was on the computer and I was looking up wrestling schools. Okay. And I came across Reality of Wrestling. And my parents still remember this to this day. I called them over and I was like, look, this is in Houston, Texas, which is about six hours away from where I live. And I was like, Booker T is the trainer. And I told them, when I turn 18, I'm going to move to Houston and I'm going to start training to become a wrestler. And they were like, okay, like, sure, yeah. Like, my parents have always been super supportive. Sure. Um, so that was my plan. When I turn 18, I'm going to start my journey of becoming a pro wrestler at Reality Wrestling. Um, I ended up coming across, I had no idea what independent wrestling was. I just thought it was <laughs> WWE. Yeah. Um, so when I was about, like, a... Uh, 11 um my dad was like oh there's a local wrestling promotion here called laredo wrestling alliance and i was like oh really so he started taking me to those shows and um then 
he was kind of like friends with some of the wrestlers. Um, so that's kind of how I, I, I started being like a little, what is it called? Those, the people that like, they grab the ring jackets and they take it to the back. Like, I mean, I know New Japan has like young lions and stuff like that. So it's like, basically, like yeah. yeah. So that's how, I, that's how I started. I was like a little 10 year old girl, like <laughs> super excited yeah. to take all the stuff to the back. And then, um, two of the local wrestlers, they had a lot of free time and they were like, I wanted to train so bad. And so my parents asked them when I was 11, they asked them when I was, she asked them when I was 11, if I could start training. And they were like, oh, that's a little iffy. Cause like, yeah. Yeah, a little <laughs> early. they were like, get her into tumbling and then, um, have her do that for a bit so I did cheer and stuff and then once I turned 13 my mom asked again and they were like all right bring her in so I started training with them I trained for a whole year and then when I was 14 I had my first match yeah uh it, her name's Alma Bea she's like a, a luchadora from here uh in Laredo okay and so yeah, at first it was just like I was just having matches here. And then I kind of had like those um, those pressures of like kind of fitting into like I was in eighth grade. So I was moving into high school. Yeah. And so I had those pressures of like, oh, my God, people are going to make fun of me because people oh, made fun God. of me. Just <laughs> people made fun of me when I was in elementary just for like liking wrestling. So I was like, people know that I'm trying to be a wrestler. Like I'm going to get made fun of so hard <laughs> so, yeah people in high school they don't like wrestling for some reason no they're, no. they're too cool for it you know actually like, I, yeah i'm like actually a lot of people like wrestling they just don't want to admit it <laughs> everyone's like a closet wrestler fan they don't want to admit it but they love themselves with john cena everyone does they just have to right right um but yeah so i kind of had like the pressures of fitting in so i my freshman year i tried out for the soccer team and i made it and um, I had no time for wrestling, like no time. So yeah. it was always like practices for soccer and games. And so I just had no time for wrestling. And <clears throat> I was kind of like, I was just not happy. Um, yeah. I liked soccer, but I didn't love it. So it was just like something to do. And I was like, this is not like my passion. And so then uh, my sophomore year, I didn't do soccer and I went back to wrestling and then everything just like I was like I'm gonna be so serious about this and I was and I was at training all the time and then once I turned 17 everything was just like whoo I was like oh my god <laughs> yeah like that's around the same time I first found out about you because I was like oh 17 year old sensation like who is this like 17 uh, what lucky <laughs> doing that like that's amazing but yeah I mean yeah. Well, for one like what position you play during soccer I played mid Okay. Yeah, so I was either like right mid or mid mid. Were you good though? Like, were you really I good? was. I was not really good. The thing is, I did a lot of sports okay. when I was younger. I feel like um. So my sister, I have three sisters. Okay. So my older sister had dance. My mm. youngest sister had dance, and then my um my other sister had cheer. Okay. And they loved it. Like, they, they loved going to practices, and they were so excited. And I was always yeah. like, I swear to you, I did volleyball, I did basketball, I did soccer, I did cheer, gymnastics, dance. I did everything you can think of. And my mom was always like, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> and she had to keep buying, like, ballet shoes and then soccer shoes and then cheer shoes. But it was just, I was just trying to find, like, my passion. Like, I didn't love anything. And then so once I got into wrestling, I was like, all right, this is what passion feels like. Yeah, I mean, you got to, like, you know, keep trying each one. Eventually, something will catch. And obviously, that was wrestling. But, yeah. I mean, well, which one was, like, your least favorite out of all of those? I mean, that you list a lot of them. Ballet. Oh, my God, I hated it. I hated it so much. My mom was a dancer. So yeah. she did, like, ballet and, like, all that. And so I was like, all right, like, I'll try it. Um. I was like, maybe like I can try out for like the dance team at school or something, just something yeah. to do. So I tried it and I was like, I hate this. I hate this so much. <laughs> oh God. And then I became a wrestler, so there's that. <laughs> what a difference, like ballet <laughs> to like professional wrestling. That's like the biggest switch right? of my time. Like yeah. From, like yeah. ballet to like pro wrestling. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 
But so you start turning your 13. So eventually, you know, you have to make a move set. And your current finisher right now is the code red, right? Um, it was. Now um, it's the the old execution. So okay. it's like the is you start off in like the DDT, but it's yeah. an X Factor. Okay. So like, yeah. where did you decide to like get like these moves from? Like, did you have like a certain person? Obviously, there's like Edge and whatnot. But like, why did you like pick those moves for yourself? So the code red. I feel like we always uh like us as wrestlers, we kind of like. You name, like, three of your favorite wrestlers, and you yeah. can kind of see those wrestlers in that wrestler, if you get what I'm saying. So, um, my favorite wrestlers were, like, uh, uh, female-wise, it was AJ Lee and Alexa Bliss. So, yeah. Alexa Bliss's finisher was a code red, and I was like, yeah. okay, I'm little. Like, I'm little. <laughs> All these uh, other wrestlers are, like, taller than me, so I have to do, like... Like, I can do, like, flippy stuff and whatnot. So I was like, okay, the Code Red's a cool finisher. So I started doing that. And then I was like, okay, okay, there's wrestlers that are the same height as me. So I can't always use that finisher. Um, so then I actually, uh, there's a wrestler, Gino Medina. Uh, Medina? He's a, yes, he signed oh, yeah. to MLW. Yeah. Yeah, so he's uh, he's a trainer at Row, so he's one of my trainers, and he's actually the one that came up with that finisher for me, because he started when he was younger, uh, when he was like 14 too, and so he used to do that finisher, and he's like, take it. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. That's a good background story too. Wow. Yeah. But on top of that, like, you've had, like, a bunch of matches, obviously. I mean, you've, you've wrestled pretty much every big name in women's wrestling right now that isn't, like, signed somewhere, but even people that are. But you've had matches against, like, Sue Young, which was, like, a hardcore match. At that point, did you have any experience, like, with, like, chairs and ladders and all that kind of stuff? And, like, how did that feel? Because that had to hurt. I, that definitely had to hurt. I had no experience. I, that match, I was actually 17, so she was, like, terrified. She was terrified. She's like, she's like, this is not child abuse, right? And I was like, no, no, it's not. Um, but yeah, that that was a crazy match. It was pretty fun though. I was like, I might have to get into like some hardcore wrestling, not like hardcore, hardcore, but um, it's ECW. <laughs> yeah, you might, you might as well be the first person Maybe. to show up over there. Maybe. Just saying, that could be a good gimmick too. Um, no, but yeah, that was really, really fun. I like those, those matches too, because you can kind of like, um, be more interactive with the crowd and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it is hurt also, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, of course. I mean, <laughs> that kind of stuff, that's, that's wild. But who's been your favorite opponent so far? Because I know you faced like, you know, Sue and then Tessa and like Kylie Ray and stuff. So like, who's been like your favorite that you wrestled so far? It would have to be a toss-up between uh, Kylie Ray and Hyon. Okay. Th those two were my favorite, 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 favorite opponents ever. They're also, like, two of my closest friends, so, like, it was pretty cool. Well, yeah, of course. If you're best friends, you have to, like, it has to be your top favorite people to wrestle. Yeah, you, you hit your friends <laughs> the hardest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But also, like, since, like, you know, you've been wrestling for a long time, I'm assuming you have to travel to all these places yourself, right? So, like, you're on the road. What's the furthest you've ever driven just for a wrestling show? Um, so I actually just started uh, driving out of town kind of recently, like a few months ago. Okay. Um, the furthest I've driven is Houston so far because that's like six hours. Yeah, um, at far. first, I was taking like Greyhounds and stuff since I couldn't drive. Mm -hmm. um, or I would just like try to catch a ride with like other wrestlers. Yeah. But there's not too many wrestlers uh, from Laredo, so it was kind of hard. So when I couldn't find anyone from here, I'd have to take uh, Greyhounds. So even when I was uh, traveling to Row, um, that was like once a month, I'd be I'd be on a Greyhound over there, and those were like those were the worst because the those those drives could range from like six hours to like ten hours because it's on a bus. Yeah. And it's like slower, and there's stops, and there's, uh, it's the worst. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a lot of fun. What's like the weirdest thing you see like on a Greyhound traveling to a wrestling show? Oh my God, there's so many. So I have so many stories. Um, they're so, they're crazy though. Uh, one time. Okay, so one time I was getting dropped off. At, uh, at the Greyhound, and every time I would try to, because there's, like, where the Greyhound is, there's a lot of, like, homeless people living around there, mm -hmm. and um, 
I remember this one time I was getting dropped off and every time I would try to like finally get out of the car to go in, um, like a homeless person would come like start banging on the window and like asking for money or like asking for I don't know what and they were just banging and banging and I was terrified. I was like, I don't want to get off and they were like, oh my God. <laughs> and um, it just kept happening. They were like knocking and knocking and knocking and I was like, and then finally I was like able to find my way in but it was there's a lot of stories I'm like some of them are like very inappropriate I've seen some crazy stuff it's sacrifices <laughs> I mean yeah of course of course but while you're on these great hounds and all that kind of stuff's happening like you know obviously you gotta listen to music so like what's on the playlist are you listening to going to these wrestling shows hmm honestly if I show you my playlist it's like a mixture of everything Every, I listen to rock, I listen to country, I listen to, um, like, pop, I listen everything. <laughs> so, okay, so let, let's try to narrow it down. Who are your, okay. your top three artists? I mean, that might be a hard question, but which ones? So, I really like Eminem. I like Eminem a lot. Okay. Right. I like, I like uh, Rihanna a lot. I like, um, hmm. I, I like Rascal Flatts a lot, too. Yeah. Who? He's a country singer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I like her, too. Okay, all right. I grew up listening Did you watch her on Disney? Yeah, yeah. Okay, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but coming back to your training, so... Eventually, you did train with Booker T at Reality Wrestling. Are you still currently the uh, ROH Women's Champion or Diamonds Champion? Yes. I actually have my championship on my desk right here. Show it to the people. Whoa. That's a nice belt. Yeah, I've never <laughs> seen it like one time before. I'm like, that's, that's oh, like one of the yeah. nicest women's titles I've ever seen. Wow. Impressive. Yeah. How many times have you won that title? Once. Once. Oh, so this is your first reign. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, supported. So how'd you yeah. feel like when you won the title for the first time? I mean, that'd be a big moment. It was, I think that was like, so far, that's like the biggest moment of my career. Yeah. Um, mostly because it's crazy to me because I grew up saying that I wanted to start my journey of becoming a pro wrestler at Reality of Wrestling when yeah. I turned 18. And then like, I won the championship at 18. I'm like wait what like it's so crazy the way the world works <laughs> yeah wow but like you know train with booker t um were you starstruck the first time like you saw him and you had to start training with him or was it kind of like all right stay calm i just gotta get through the motions and uh figure it out the rest of the day honestly yeah i, I was um he was like one of my favorite wrestlers too so yeah i remember the first time i met him um it was it was a show, it, they were doing like a Rise on the Row show, so it was like Rise yeah. and Row, and um, so I went to that, and it was actually a seminar, so I went to that seminar, and then I got chosen to be on the Rise show, um, I had two matches, so um, I did that, and after my match, I went to him, and I was like, asking him for advice and stuff, and critiques, and um, he knew who I was like he's like yeah like I've heard so much about you and um I'm really impressed and and whatnot and I remember like as he was talking to me I was like listening to what he was saying and then I remember just like zoning out for like three <laughs> seconds and being like am I really talking to Booker T right now and then I just like came back to reality and I was like okay okay <laughs> <laughs> But, like, what's also, like, the biggest advice you got from so far? Hmm. Ah, oh, there's so, there's so much. Um, the thing is, um, so we, after our shows, after every row show, um, we go to the yeah. back, and he'll put us in a circle, and he'll just, like, talk to us for maybe, like, about, like, like, 10, 15 minutes, and so... Every time, like, he talks, he's always giving advice. So it's like, I just soak that in. And it's like, I just feel like everything he tells me, I'm just, like, mind blown. Like, he's just he's just so smart. So I'm just like, 
<laughs> but um, Starks looks like, oh my god, Booker. Yeah, I'm like, he's he's so smart. He's like the freaking smartest person I've ever met in wrestling wise. Yeah. Um, I would have to say, hmm, I'm the worst at thinking on the spot. Nothing wrong with that. Happens to the best of us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I don't know. I can't really think. You can just edit this out, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dang, I'm the worst at thinking, like, on the spot. He's giving me so much advice, and I'm just like... Or give me, like, <laughs> a couple, like... Give me, like, top two or three. You, like, pick a couple of them. Okay, okay. Let me think. Um... So one thing he always tells us, he he will not, um... He will not tell us good luck. He will not. He'll say, don't fuck it up, kid. <laughs> <laughs> every time and i feel like that's like it just it just it makes you nervous but it also doesn't because it's like i feel like when people tell you good luck you're just like you're like okay (laughs) and you keep thinking you keep thinking and then someone tells you don't fuck it up and you're like dang i can't fuck this up (laughs) (laughs) can't have no choice after that it's like well nothing but to do but uh just go out there and do it right i'm like that's probably the best advice i've got (laughs) But, like, moving on from, like, you know, reality wrestling, like, obviously you've had, like, a, you know, a good wholesome career so far. But you also made an appearance on WWE as part of, like, the conga line for uh, No Way Jose. How I was, did. How was being, like, backstage with everyone? Like, who did you get to meet while you are back there? Um, I feel like everybody's just doing their own thing. But yeah. I was able to say hi to a couple people. Um, like, I know Booker and Charmel were there the, uh, the day of Royal Rumble. Um, right. so... They were there, like, talking with us, and I got to meet, like, Michelle McCool. Um, I got to meet um, Alexa Bliss and stuff like that. Um, it was pretty cool, you know, like, being back there. It wasn't so much of, like, being starstruck anymore. It wasn't really, like, a, yeah. oh, my God, like. But it was more of, like, a, like, okay, like, I... It's kind of like an eye-opener. Like, okay, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, I want to be back here. Like, I want to be surrounded by these people you know like the people that have like the same freaking ambitions and goals that I do like this is why I'm working towards this uh so yeah that was that was so cool but also like how did you get to a point where like you know WB saying like hey come in for like a conga line spot it's like you know what was like the application process I guess of like getting into WWE for that so um WWE usually when they're in a certain town, they will ask, uh, or like a certain um, area, they'll ask certain people that they know to like, um, how do I, how do I put it? Um, They'll ask for like options, I guess. So they'll ask um, Kevin, he's the producer for Reality of Wrestling. So they'll ask him or they'll, they'll ask Booker, like, do you have any guys? that um we can use and so uh, that's how i got on they okay. uh kevin and booker kind of like mentioned my name they were like okay um so i just had to send an email and then they'll like kind of pick and choose who they want to use and so that's how i got uh, asked to do that so it was like a three day um it was three days yeah um so i did a smackdown raw and uh the royal rumble oh you're in a you were part of the Rumble, too? I didn't even know that part. Wait, how, how is it being in an arena like that with so many people? Um, so, well, I wasn't, like, an extra in the Rumble, but um, I was, we were there just in case we needed to be used. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we were still back there, but that was really cool because we got to, like, see the way they set up, like, everything, like, the ring and whatnot. And just like yeah. being there, I've I've actually never been to a pay per view before. Um, oh. Growing up, like yeah, I've never been to WrestleMania or a pay per view or anything. So that technically that was my first pay per view. So what a good one to start with. <laughs> right, like I I literally get the chills like just just saying it like yeah. The first pay per view I went to, I was like, in a way, I guess you could say in a way, I was a part of it. Yeah. Um, and that was yeah. just that was just like so crazy to me because it was just like i it just shows like i worked so hard for this yeah i mean of course it's and it's like it's little back. things but it's like those little things are what like keeps you going to like get there oh you know? yeah 
definitely, definitely. But like, where do you want to go with your career? Like, I mean, there's so many options in wrestling now. It's like WWE, the big goals, the AEW, MLW, NWA, Impact. Where Where do you want to go next? Honestly, I just want to be able to make a living off of wrestling. So as long as I'm wrestling and I'm making a living off of it and I'm happy, like, that that's, that's really all I need. Um, I just want to wrestle everywhere. Um, so, of course, like, WWE is, like, the big goal for everybody. Yeah. But um, I just want to wrestle everywhere. Um, I'd love to wrestle for Ring of Honor, MLW. Um, I've actually gotten the chance to rest, to go against Thunder Rosa for the NWA title. I saw um, that. Good match. Uh, so, yeah. So, it's just, like, all of these things is just, like, as long as I'm wrestling, yeah. I'm happy. I mean, perfectly said, obviously. Yeah. You know, what's better than that? But <laughs> I guess final thing to kind of just wrap it all up. Um, well, it's, it's Corona season. So, what kind of stuff you've been doing on your, like, uh, quarantine so far? How have you been keeping yourself busy? Hmm. So... I've been uh, trying to, like, stay motivated. Um, I'll go for, like, I never liked, I never really liked jogs and, like, going for yeah. runs and stuff. But I found my, I find myself doing that a lot. And, like, I love it. Like, <laughs> I fell in love with going for runs and stuff. Um, I Like I said, I have three sisters. So I live with my three sisters, my mom and my dad. And so there's always something going on. <laughs> like, um, my mom is, she's so cute. She, like. Every five seconds, she wants to buy, like, a new game or, like, a new, like, something, just so we have something to do. Um, yeah. My family is very close, so I guess just, like, spending a lot of time with my family because I didn't really have a lot of time to do that since I was always, like, traveling and stuff. Um, and then I'm here during the week, but my parents are working and my sisters are, like, have practices, so it's always hard to, like, kind of actually be together. So I feel like this is just such a good time to, like, reconnect with my family and stuff. So it's been really fun. That's great. That's great. I guess one more final thing, actually. So uh, as a wrestling YouTuber, like, in part, like, my whole community, a lot of us are starting to, like, slowly get into the ring and actually starting to train. So, and there's a lot of, like, you know, um, female wrestling influencers i guess like they're on twitter and instagram and whatnot that want to be wrestlers so like what would be what would be like your biggest advice for people like them that want to get into the ring um start start getting in shape now um so you know start hitting the gym start um getting like your body in shape and eating healthy get your mind healthy because wrestling is so much of like a mindset um tessa actually gave me this, this advice so she told me, like, you need to get your mind straight because uh, wrestling is, like, 90% mental strength and, like, 10% everything else. Because if you don't have, like, a strong mindset, um, it's so hard because so many people will try to bring you down. Um, you'll start seeing, like, other people succeed. And, like, of course, of course, like, you, you, you want to see everyone succeed. But you have those moments where it's, like, like, I wish, I wish, like, I could get there. And it's, like, that's when you need to snap out of it and be, like, I will get there, you know? Um, I'm just not really caring what anybody thinks ever because I had, like, that problem um, when I was, like, in middle school and high school. And it got me to stop watching wrestling. And I know, like, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people that are wrestlers now and they say that they didn't they didn't start training or anything or they stopped they forced themselves to stop liking wrestling because of of like high school and stuff like that um so i kind of i'm like so glad that i was able to just be like you know what i don't care what people think and i'm gonna do this because that's how i was able to succeed and so like i feel like yes like i want to um I want to be remembered in wrestling, you know, by being, like, a really good wrestler. But I always, I also want to be remembered in wrestling for, like, like just, like, an inspiration to, like, younger kids. Because I feel like there's probably so many people that want to, like, start off their journey. But they're yeah. just so scared. Because it is scary. I was really scared. Um, but I'm just, like, living proof that, like, if you just don't care what anybody thinks and you work really hard, like... It'll happen. 
Well, there we go. Perfectly said. So, YouTube, that is the interview with the prodigy, Roxy. Where can they find you, like, on social media? So, my Instagram is at underscore Roxy. So, it's underscore R-O-K-C. And then my Twitter is the Roxy underscore. And my Facebook is R-O-K-C. So, you don't have a TikTok. I don't have a TikTok. <laughs> Ah, unfortunate, unfortunate. You gotta make a TikTok. My like sister TikTok has season. been trying. My little sister, she's in, she's in middle school right now. So she's yeah. like constantly making TikTok. She'll literally be in the kitchen and she'll be like making food and she's like, I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? And she's like been trying to teach me these TikToks and I'm like, I can't. You gotta do it. You gotta do a little renegade on TikTok. It, it, it's the new move nowadays. Like it's just what you have to Maybe. do. It's part of the culture. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's the interview, guys. Hope you guys really enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, share, and always subscribe. And we outie. We going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, when it just like one, two, three. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.